اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صل و سلم علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد افضل صلواتکا بعدد معلوماتکا و بارک و سلم و سلی علیہ سورة البلد بلد مین سٹی اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی took a note in the holy city of مکہ the bottom line is that message in مکہ will bring you hardship O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but ultimately you will get it took an oath and father and son are in father and kids that human may be a father he is in hardship or maybe a son or daughter, they are in hardship as well. And the answer for oath is, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We have created a human being in a world of hardship. So they may not be disappointed with hardships they are facing. This world is the world of hardship. This is? Yes. So they may not be disappointed in Arabic language they say Hazi sunnatul hayat this is the sunnah of life fluctuation is the sunnah of life har roz eid ne iske halwa khurat kase in Persian it is said har roz eid ne iske halwa khurat kase every day is not eid that people will be eating sweets yes one day you will eat sweet another one you will eat peppers yes one day you will have shish kebab, another day you will be hungry. Yes or not? One day you will be having a good job, another, way, another day you have lost it. So you may not be disappointed with. This is sunnah of hayat, hazi sunnatul hayat. And that's why this world is called hadith. This world is called hadith. And hadith is the quality which means changes will take place. Changes will take place in this world. One day you will be happy, another one you will be upset. One day you will be healthy, another day you will be suffering from some disease. Yes? One day you will be okay at home, another day, yes, something happened. You both are sitting like this, not talking to each other. Yes? The next day once again you will be okay. This is Sunnatul Hayat. Hazihi. Sunnatul Hayat. This is the Sunnah of life. Fluctuation is not only in uh, economics. Fluctuation is in every human, uh, uh, in every field of human life. In politics, there are fluctuation. There is or not? Yes. Ups and downs. In business, in job, in health, in wealth, in everything, in relation, in friendship. Yes, ups and downs. Got it? And this is the beauty of this life. This is what? The beauty of this life. Everything is to be known through its opposites. Everything is known through its opposites. How do you know health? Yes, through sickness. How do you know, yes, the beauty of cold water? Through thirst. Yes, got it? As I told you that once a king... He was asking his ministers that what is good in food and delicious. So somebody was saying, oh, shish kebab is okay. Another one was saying, chunks are okay. A third one was saying, beans is okay. A fourth one was saying, halwa is okay. A fifth one was saying, something else. Yes. Whatever somebody tasted, so he said that is very delicious. Yes. Got it or not it? So we call him chaprasi or peon. The peon. Yes, Chaprasi. 
Huh? No, clerk is something else. That is lower than clerk. Yes. So, Chaprasi or the PN or the office runner. We call him also office runner because he runs from this office to that office. Bring the file. He brings the file. Bring tea. He brings tea. Yes, just go and call Mr. So and so. Let's call Chaprasi. Yes, or PN. What? PN. So, the PN was standing there to serve the cabinet. So, the king asked him that Chaprasi Batsha. What do you think? What do you think? What's good to eat? And what's delicious? He said, nothing. He said, nothing is delicious. He said, what do you mean? He said, this is hunger which makes things delicious. Yes. This is hunger which makes things delicious. If you are not hungry, shish kebab is not delicious. If you are hungry, dry bread is delicious. Is it or not? And that's why the farmers and the Bazgaran, Haywad, who? The Bazgarans in their farms, when they are working in scorching heat, in scorching heat, and they eat dry bread with onion and with dough. With onion and with dough. You cannot have their taste in Hilton and Sheraton. Yes, they are sitting there on, yes, on dirt. Yes, or not? And they put uh, fresh water there in dough. Let's see. Dog mean? What? Yes, yogurt milk. Yogurt milk. So they put water in yogurt milk. Yes. And cut the onion and dry bread. Onion and dry bread. And a sip of dog. Yes. That is as delicious you cannot imagine. Such like delicious food anywhere. And that's why at that time I work in my ground. So I make dog and the onion and the dry bread. And then I sit in my ground. Yes, in what? In my heart. In what? In my heart. I have a heart here. Yes. So sometimes I ask for him, he comes there and I give him a cup of tea. But in heart. So that cup of tea, he cannot have that delicious taste anywhere in Hilton and Sheraton, in seven star hotels. Yes? Got it or not? Because that's very close to nature. That's very close? To nature. Artificial life does not have any taste. Natural life, it has taste. Professor, he was in artificial life until now. Now he is in natural life. Taste is different. Is it? Human being, when he is wealthy, he does not think of hardship. He says, nothing will happen to me. Does he think that he has not been watched by anybody? Does he think he has not been watched by anybody? And why he does not set free a slave? Why he does not set a slave free? And why he does not feed a poor or an orphan? Those who do that, They are the blessed people. And those who do not, they are the unblessed people. La uqsimu bi'az al-balade. So la mean no. La mean no. So some of us say this is extra. This kalima is extra. We say this is not extra. Allah says that whatever I say, even without taking an oath, that is true for sure. That's true for sure. You know, somebody is taking oath, so people may believe in his word. Yes, because people without uh, oath will not believe in his word. That's why he says, I swear by Allah. He says, I swear by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But every single word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is true for sure. That's number one. Yes. Number two, if people will not believe in your word, maybe we'll, you will face some loss. You will face? You will lose something. But if people will not believe in the words of Allah, what Allah will lose? Nothing. So that's why Allah says, La, I don't need to take an oath. La mean? La hajat al qasam. I don't need to take an oath, but still I do take it. Still, I do take it. 
so hill it has a few meaning number one and you are born in this holy city and you are born in this holy city oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are born in this holy city and number two وَأَنْتَ حِلُّ الْبِعَاظَ الْبَلَدِ وَأَنْتَ حِلُّ الْبِعَاظَ الْبَلَدِ And you are the comer to this city. Comer in a sense that you conquered it. Comer in a sense that you conquered it. You recaptured it. You recaptured it. So actually in this one word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the message in one word that now you are living because this surah is Makki this is before Hijrah so the bottom line was that they will drive you out from this city they will drive you out from this city and once again you will recapture it you know what I'm saying in one word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him the whole story yes and you are the one who will recapture this city so recapture means when you have to lose it. Once you have to lose it. So it means they will drive you out of this city. And as you know, we are moving with our free consent from one place to another. From one place to another. We moved from Kandahar to America. Yes. Yes or not? But if somebody will drive you out by force, that is very harmful. If you are leaving a city and going somewhere else to get settled there, that is something else. If somebody is forcing you to get out of this city and go somewhere else, that's very harmful. Yes? Is it or not? And that's why when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received the first ever wahi in the cave of Hira. And Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha took him to her first cousin, Wariqa ibn Nawfal. وَكَانَ إِمْرَأً قَدْ تَنَسَّرَ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ He was the first cousin of Sayyidah Khadija رضي الله تعالى عنها But by nature He was not accepting the idol worshipping Yes, so he accepted Christianity Because at least Christianity was a divine religion Christianity was a divine religion Yes, and then he studied Injil and Bible very well and he became a great scholar and authority in Injil. Yes. So Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Warika ibn Nawfal. And she said, Isma' ibn Akhika. That listen to your nephew. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related the story. I was there in cave of Hira. Suddenly somebody appeared there in shape of a man. And he ordered me Iqra read and i told him i am illiterate i cannot read and recite yes so he squeezed me then he said iqra i said the same thing again he squeezed me for the third time he said iqra i said the same thing he squeezed me to my utmost that i got afraid of my life that maybe he's going to kill me and he said iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. and then he disappeared. yes. and I started shivering and shaking. so what is this? so what is Ibn Nawfal? he said يا ابن أخي my nephew هذا الناموس الذي جاء إلى موسى this was the same archangel who came to Prophet Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام. So Muhaddisin says that he himself was Christian. He himself was Christian. He was follower of Jesus. Why he mentioned Moses and he did not mention Jesus? Yes, actually, 
he was giving a message to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The resemblance of his message to the message of Musa. The resemblance of his message to the message of Musa, because Musa fought with a very tough dictator. He fought. He challenged whom? A very tough dictator, Pharaoh. So the message was that you will be facing lot of dictator, not only one. You are will be toughest than Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He was facing only one dictator, and you will be facing dictators, dictators, and dictators. Got it? And you will be challenging all of them. So that's why he mentioned what Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and then he said that Yabna Akhi, oh my nephew, I wish I was still alive, but I don't think so because I am too old. But I wish I was still alive. When the people will drive you out of Mecca, I want to join you in their journey. I wish to join you in their journey, but I am too old. Yes. So the moment he told Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they will drive you out of Mecca, so Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yes. Look, he said, "Awa mukhrijiya hum, my hometown, the town of my father and grandfather and great great grandfathers." Generation after generation, so they will drive me out. So what a captain of all told him, yes, that what is mentioned there in Bible, and that is mentioned in Old Testament as well. So it means to drive somebody out by force. That's very harmful. That's why Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he became alert when he told him, when they will drive you out. So here Allah subhanahu wa taala. He didn't say to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly that people will drive you out, but he said that when you will recapture the Mecca, yes, to make it a little bit uh, mild, to make it what, little bit mild, that yes, recapturing. So first you will lose it, first, then you will recapture it. That's second meaning and third meaning. وَأَنْ تَحِلُّ الْبِعَاضَ الْبَلَدُ I swear by the city of Mecca وَأَنْ تَحِلُّ الْبِعَاضَ الْبَلَدُ And you are free بِعَاضَ الْبَلَدِ in this city to fight your enemies. To fight your enemies. So write down that fighting inside the limits of haram. That is haram. Fighting. Inside the limits of huh, haram, and haram, as I told you, that when we say haram, so sometimes we mean the Masjid of Mecca. That let's go to Haram Sharif. We are in hotel, so what do we say? Let's go to Haram Sharif. So we mean the Masjid. We mean the Masjid. But another concept of haram that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam put limits, yes, around Mecca, put limits around from all around. That area is called haram. That area is called haram. For example, from Jeddah side, there's also 22 or 23 miles. 22 or 23 miles where the roads get separated for Muslims and non-Muslims. So that area is called haram. So inside that haram, fighting. Is not allowed, not permissible. One has to avoid fighting inside Haram, in that area. But when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was recapturing it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala told him, "You are free." Wanta hello land, you are free. Behaz al balade in this city. And in a hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Wa inha uhilat li saatan," and for some time. That area of Haram has been made permissible for me to fight therein, to fight therein. Even though when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was entering Mecca, so he ordered Sahaba Rizwanullah alayhi majmaeen try to avoid any type of fight. Yes, do not attack people. Do not attack people. Only defence. If somebody is attacking you, yes. So only. Defense, got it. And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he made platoons of army that, under the leadership of Mr. So and So, 
this group will enter from this side. Their group will enter from their side. He gave another group of army to Khalid ibn Walid, رضي الله تعالى عنه. To Khalid ibn Walid, رضي الله تعالى عنه, that they will enter from the north side of uh, Mecca. Yes, and there, Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl, the son of Abu Jahl, a big general of Mecca. His name was Ikrama, رضي الله تعالى. He is a big Sahabi later on. So Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl, رضي الله تعالى عنه. He was there with a group of his own army. So when Khalid, he was entering Mecca from their side. So Ikrama and his people attacked them. Yes, and Khalid started defense. He started fight there. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw that one fight is going on there. So he said, oh, Khalid did it. So he said, oh Allah, I have nothing to do if Khalid has started fight. If Khalid has started fight, so I have nothing to do with that action of Khalid. Got it? Got it or not it? Mean I am not happy with this fight of Khalid. And then some people told Khalid that what happened? Because Prophet said this sentence that So Khalid he came and brought with him a few witnesses. They told the messenger of Allah, I swear by Allah, Subhanahu, I have not started it. I have not started fighting. Actually, Ikrama and his people attacked us. His people attacked us. So anyhow, that fight at that time, that was permissible for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for a while or for some time. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa avoided that. Prophet avoided that and that's why he was proceeding and what he was saying. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala was holding the rope of the she camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ordered him because people, they were running like crazy, the people of Makkah. Yes, to protect their lives. To protect their lives because the conqueror general Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we attacked to his state many, many times. Yes, we did 10 times conspiracies against the state. So what he will do? He will kill all of us. But Prophet ﷺ said to Bilal, that Ya Bilal, Nadi bin Nas, Nadi bin Nas, Man masha ila baytillah, fawwa amin. That make an announcement, whosoever will go close to the house of Allah, yes, to the yards of the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is safe and sound, he is secured. Got it? So people rush to the yards of the house of Allah to protect their lives. After a while, Prophet ﷺ, Abu Sufyan ta'ala, the chief of Makkah, he was standing there. He was standing there. So Sayyidina Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah ﷺ said, Ya Rasulullah, O the messenger of Allah, our cousin and your father-in-law, Abu Sufyan, the chief of Makkah, he is standing there. And as you know, that he is a man of prestige. Is a man of what? Because as you know that people, yeah, look at me, Toyota Corolla is running. It runs or not? Say, and Jaguar, it runs as well. It runs as well. But sometimes, they want, uh, it doesn't mean that Jaguar is not allowed or that's against Sharia. That's okay, you should have it. But some people, they want to have a Jaguar as a prestige. I have a Jaguar. Yes. The way they will... Uh, 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 say about that. Yes, I have a what? A Jaguar. You know Jaguar or not? Yes. You know that. Yes. Or I have a skyline. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or as the case, no, here is okay. Yes. But some people, they are thinking of these things as a matter of what? Prestige. prestige. So Abu Sufyan was a big general. He was chief of Makkah. He was a man of prestige. That you know that he's a man of prestige if you will give him some respect. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered Bilal radiallahu ta'ala no, an yunadiya to make an announcement. Man dakhala dara bi Sufyan afawwa amin. Whosoever will enter to the castle of Abu Sufyan, he is secured. That what a respect he gave to the castle of Abu Sufyan. So Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala, he said to Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, awa ya'nini, he meant me, him, because he knew that what I have done to my son-in-law. 
But I, because every army, it was led against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi by whom? By Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala. He said, me? Abbas said, yes. He meant you. He said, yes, subhanallah. He gave me that much respect. He put me equal to the house of Allah. Because the first announcement was regarding the house of Allah. And the second one, regarding the house of Abu Sufyan. That, oh, that much respect he has given me. That he put my house in this regard, in this specific issue, equal to the house of Allah. So he said, Abbas, by God, he is a man. By God, he is a man. Yes. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was proceeding further. So his first cousin, in whose house Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to stay when he was at Makkah, Sayyida Ummihani, Razi Allah ta'ala anha, the sister of Sayyidina Ali, Razi Allah ta'ala anha, she had put a few of her in-laws, few of her in-laws inside her house to protect them. And Sayyidina Ali Razi Allah ta'ala anha, he was holding his sword in his hand and standing on the entrance of that house and saying that, Sister, leave me alone with these guys. I want to cut them in pieces because they did not have any character. They are people who have no character. Yes, my sister was sitting in their house and still they were attacking us. So it means that they were characterless people. They were not thinking of relation. So let me handle them. And Sayyida Ummihani, she used to say, no, I have protected them. But Ali said, I am going to kill them. So Sayyida Ummihani, Razi Allah Ta'ala, she came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how are you, Ummihani? She said, I am okay. She said that I have protected a few of my in-laws in my house, but my brother is standing there, and he wants to kill them. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, he said himself with such a louder voice, it was heard to Ali, Allah, who was standing there, that man ya ummahani. Whosoever you have protected, so we protected them as well. Yes. So Sayyidina Ali Allah, he turned around, he put his sword in his case. Because now the order came, supreme order. Which order? Sovereign authority. Rasulullah sallallahu he said, Ajarna man ajati ya ummahani. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was proceeding further. So he said to Bilal, let make another announcement. Man aglaka alayhi baba darihi fawwa amin. Whosoever closed the door of his own house, yes, and he stayed behind his door, he is secured. We are not going to enter his house and to kill him. We are not going to enter his house and to kill him. So people rush to their own houses. People rush to their, even though it was allowed for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to give them a lesson. To give them. And not only that. Then after that, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu was ordered by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, go to the roof top of the house of Allah and give azan. So Bilal gave azan. It means that it was a call. All people are invited to come to the house of Allah. So they came. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was standing there in the door of the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he addressed the people of Makkah. He asked them only, Alastumul Lazina, Kazabtumuni, you are not the people who belied me that you are a sorcerer or you are a magician or you are a liar and you are a poet and you are this and that. So they were calm and quiet looking at grounds. They were unable to have an eye contact with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Then he said, Alastumul Lazina, Zarabtum Ashabi, you are not the people who were pulling and uh, grabbing Bilal and Ammar and all these people here in the streets of Makkah and their bodies were bleeding. So again, they were looking at ground. Then Prophet Sallallahu says, Alastumul Lazina, Akhraj Tumuna, you are not the people who draw us out from our own homeland. You grabbed our properties, you grabbed our houses, you turned us out of Makkah. So again, they were looking at the ground. Prophet says, Alastumul Lazina Qatal Tumuna, you are not the people who came all the way here from to Medina to attack us. So again they were looking at grounds. Yes. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Walakin maza tazunnu nabi. What you people think what I will do, how I will retaliate. 
Yes. So they said, Akhun Karim, Wabnu Akhin Karim, you are our generous and our gentle brother, and you are our generous and gentle nephew. Yes. So we are looking towards kindness, nothing else, because you are a man of character. We are characterless people, but you are a man of character. So Prophet says, Is Habu fa antumut tulaka? No problem. I will never mention it again, whatever I have mentioned. In future, I will never refer to what you have done to me. You are free people. If you want to stay here, you can stay here. If you want to go somewhere else, you are free. We will never stop you. Yes? So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Wa anta hillun bihaz al balad. La uqsimu bihaz al balad. I swear by this city wa anta hillum bihaz al balad. And you are free in this city, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are free in this city, as we did mention, that fighting inside the limits and hudud and bounds of haram, that is not permissible. But that was allowed for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he entered Makkah. Even though he avoided that. And not only that, he declared 12 people is wanted. 12 people is wanted. But later on, only three of them, they were killed. The others came to him as Muslims. Are they got pardoned for the crime they have committed? One of them was the very killer of the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Habbar ibn al-Aswad, H-A-B-B-A-R, Habbar ibn al-Aswad. Sometime before he killed the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And not only that, he pushed her to a rock. She fell down on her belly and she was pregnant. Her baby God died. And later on, because of the same injury, she died. But that guy, covering himself in a woman's cloak, like as a woman is coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he came close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I swear by Allah, or I declare that there is no, no God but only Allah. And I declare that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he opened his face. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he said, Habbar. He said, Ya Rasulullah. Ananadim, I am blameworthy. I am very much ashamed of what I have done. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him that Habbar, no problem. You reconciled with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay, the death of my daughter, that is pardoned. The death of my grandchild, that is pardoned. Because you reconciled with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Got it? Not it? Or about it. Yes? So that was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why the author of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a Britisher, referring to such like events, he said that in fact he was an angel of peace. In fact, he was angel of peace. 
hardships and difficulties wa walidin wa ma walada and i swear walidin by father wa ma walada and by what he delivered son or daughter son or daughter or even the third category because he delivered the same as well that's up to allah subhanahu wa taala that sometime he creates a male sometime a female and sometime the third sin <laughs> yes the sin fisalis what the hermaphrodite so any that's why allah subhanahu wa taala said wa ma walad and whatever he has delivered mean child what child and i swear wa walidin by father wa ma walada and by what he delivered child which means that father is in a difficult time and hardship for his kids and later on the children they are in difficult time and hardship for their parents for their what parents when we were small they were facing hardship taking care of us when they are old we are facing hardship taking care of them got it yes so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the answer to these swearing our oaths laqad khalaqna al-insana verily we have created man fi kabadin in a world of hardship laqad khalaqna al-insana indeed we have created human fi kabadin in a toil t o i l in a toil got it that is hardship so it means ke mard payad ha ke mushkil e nas ke aasan shawad there is no difficulty in this world which will never become easy every mushkil every difficulty there has a solution where there is a well there is a way मुश्किल देश के आसान शवद मर्द बायत के हरासान शवद देर इज नो एनी डिफिकल्टी विच कैन नॉट बी इजी सून आर लेटर बट ए मैन हैज नॉट टू बी हैरेस्ट विद यस ए मैन हैज नॉट टू बी हैरेस्ट विद डिफिकल्टी एंड हार्डशिप यस टाइम इज द बेस्ट हीलर इट विल टेक टाइम इट विल take time he may not be here because to be panic in pain is worse than pain sayyidna ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says to be panic in pain is worse than pain yes if you will become panic in pain you will harm others hope oh, just hold yourself what's going on you know what i say god or not it so allah says this word fluctuation is the sunnah of this life That's a natural rule laid down by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in this world of life. Up and down, what? Up and down in every aspect of life, in your health, in your wealth, in your job, in your business, in your friendship, in your relation, in your economy, in your politics, everything. Up and down. So you may not be disappointed and disappointed. What's going on? That's enough. Yes, and Ya Subhanallah, if we are boasting when we are in good shape <laughs> yes and when difficulty come <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is not the character of a man this is not the character of a proper human yes be balance in every situation try to be what balance yes subhanallah sometime a difficulty is expected that maybe it will it will happen when allah knows but we start sure from now <laughs> yes what's this brother this is not life 
Let it come, then you will handle it. Got it? It will make your life easy. It will make your life easy. Our Sheikh Rahimahullah, he used to say that a man who has ghera, who has ghera, ghera does not have any substitute in English. So what we can say? Two things are very much important for a human. Number one, ghera, and number two, haya. And both of them do not have any alternate, any substitute, unfortunately. Yes, a man is known by ghera. A woman is known by haya. A woman is known by haya. And a man is known by ghera. Yes, ghera is what? Yes. If somebody is harming your honor and attacking your dignity, you have to take a stand. Yes, we know it well. We, that's a part of our culture. But we are abusing that even. Yes, Hewal? We the Pashtun, we do abuse that ghera. Sometimes we do wrong thing in the name of what? In the name of ghera. Which is not good. Yes, every good quality should have its limits. Yes, good food should have its limit. Otherwise, it will cause you. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, to be panic in pain is worse than pain. What a beautiful saying of Sayyidina Ali. Got it? Got it or not it? So two things. Number one, ghera for men and haya for women. And Akbar al-Abadi, a well-known poet and he was a justice. Yes? In India before partition. But he was also the murid of Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, rahmatullahi alayhi. He was the disciple of Hakim al-Ummat Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, rahmatullahi alayhi. And he was a well-learned man of that time, oxen. He was oxen of that time. Yes. He studied where? In Oxford, and as you know, that at that time, even now, Oxford is the, the, the world, the famous university all over the world. Yes or not? Yes. Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar, the student of Sheikh Al Islam, Hadrat Madani, Rahmatullahi Alayh, once he was uh, giving his speech uh, there in London in a conference. In a con the way he was speaking the English language, even the Britisher said, Amazing, what an Indian! What an Indian. So then someone came to him and asked him that uh, where you have learned English? He said, I learned it in a small village. I studied English. Where? In a small village. So he said, where in small village? What small village? He said, that's called Oxford. <laughs> because Oxford is a village. The whole village is a university. Yes? yes? Oxford is the name of village and the name of university as well. La uqsimu biyaz al-balad wa anta hillun biyaz al-balad wa walidin wa ma walad laqad khalaqan al-insan fi kabad So Akbar al-Abadi, the well-known poet in Urdu language. Yes. He was making a lot of jokes with Western culture in a sense that it is... We, we are copying them and we are losing our own culture. That we do copy them and we are losing our own culture. So he said in one of his saying, Abdul Rahman Sahib, Ke khuda ke fazl se biwi me ya dono muhazzab hain. Khuda ke fazl se biwi me ya dono muhazzab hain. ऐसे हाँ ऐसे गुस्सा नहीं आता उसे पर्दा नहीं आता कि विद्यग्रेस अफ़ल्ला सुबहान हुआ ताला referring to someone referring to someone that विद्यग्रेस अफ़ल्ला सुबहान हुआ ताला the husband and wife the couple they are very cultured and civilized people they are very cultured and civil and then he made a joke and he said the lady does not know haya and the husband does not know ghera. So both of them are very cultured people. That's what we mean by culture nowadays. That is? Yes? Yes or not? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Indeed, Brother Kori is not here. 
وعلیکم السلام لقد خلقنا الانسان ان ديد وي هاو كرييتد هيومن في كبد ان تويل ار ان هارد شيف ان ديفيكولتي ايحسب ان لن يقدر عليه احد ایحسب ڈز ہی تنگس اللہ یقد رغل احد دیٹ نو باڈی ویل اوورکم ہم ڈز ہی تنگ لائک دیس دیٹ نو باڈی ویل اوورکم ہم وائے یقول ہی سیز احلکتو مال اللہ بدا آئی ہیو سپنٹ مال اللہ بدا اے بنچ آپ ویل آئی ہیو لات آپ انویسمنٹ نتنگ ویل ہیپن ٹو می ڈزنٹ میٹر وٹ ٹائپ آپ اکنامیکل کرائیسز آر گوئنگ آن آئی ہیو سپنٹ لات Even Allah cannot overtake me in Allah wa inna ilihe raja'un. You know what I'm saying? They are proud of what they have done. They are proud. Yes. The, yes, the, the, the powerful countries. What they are thinking? Even Allah cannot sing Titanic. Ayahsabu allan yaqdira ghali ahad. Ayahsabu does he think allan yaqdira ghali ahad. That no one can overcome him, Yaqulu, he says, boastfully. He says, proudly and boastfully. Alaktu maal al-lubada, I have spent wealth and abundance, spent in a sense that I have invested. I have a lot of investment. Yes, very strong economy. Very, and the strong economy was just like a big building on sand. Yes. Yes or not? Because, yes, subhanallah, this uh, usury and uh, interest-based economy is just like uh, being a building on the base of sand. That is, Professor, your field. Yaqulu yisayza alak tu maal al-lubada I have spent our invested maal al-lubada Wealth in abundant are in abundance ayahsabu does he think allah il allam yarau ahad that no one sees him or watch him that no one watch him and watch his character watch his action and deed does he think so allah says no 24 7 for every single nanosecond i not only watch every human i watch every single atom in my creature i watch Everything. Allah says, وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a single piece of a leaf of a tree which starts falling down in a stormy night, in a very dark night, in a faraway forest or desert. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when that part of leaf is flattering, I am watching that as well. That how it flatters. And he says, Wala ratbin, wala yabisin illa fi kitabim mubin. Not anything wet or anything dry. That's a muhawara of Arab. Dry or wet. Because the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either will be of this category or that category. That wet or dry, but that is in the knowledge and watch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Got it? Ayahsabu allam yarahu ahad does he think? Allam yarahu ahad that no one see and watch him. Allam naja'allahu aynene. Have we not made for him a pair of eyes? Have we not given him a pair of eyes? Allam naja'allahu aynene. Walisanan. And a tongue, washafatini, and a pair of lips. Wahadena on Najdin, and we have shown him the two ways, good and bad. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Look, think about your eyes, think about your tongue, think about your lips. Yes, and all these are subject to your mind. All these are subject to your mind. So when all these beautiful organs are subject to your mind, and later on, we showed you the two ways by our messenger. So do you think that I am not watching your actions and your deeds? You got that status. You got that position. You will not be watched by? Does it make sense? Got it or not it? 
say if somebody will give you his uh, valuables yes and make you a chokidar or a guard of his valuable yes and he gave you a status and position as well so do you think that he will not be watching what you are doing in his property so Allah said do you think that I'm not watching you I have given you this these valuable for no reason Alam have we not given him a pair of eyes, walisan and a tongue, washafatene and two lips? So eyes to see, and tongue to express, and lips for beauty. And lips say for beauty. Because if lips were not there, yes, and when you would be speaking at that time without lips, yes, showing you are 32, so the people will not be coming close to you. You know what I'm saying? Because your mouth would be seen dirty. You know what I'm saying? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered everything. Let nobody feel that his mouth is opening and closing and opening and closing because of the lips. Yes? Alam naja'allahu aynayni wa lisanam wa shafatayni wa hadaynaun najdayn and we have shown him the two ways, good and bad. That's up to him to decide. To go on a good way or a bad way. Falakata hamal hakaba, but he has made no effort to pass on the path that is steep. That is steep, steep path. Because passing through a steep path that's very difficult. Yes. Falakata hamal hakaba. But he has made no effort to pass on the steep path wa madraka. And what will make you know Malakaba that what is that steep path or what we mean by the steep path? That's the path going here to Woodland Hills or something? What type of steep path I am talking about? Because steep path is actually slippery. Yes? And people are very much afraid of such like path, so they don't want to enter to. They don't want to enter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if somebody is afraid of entering to a steep path, how he will get into success. But Allah says, Wa madraka mal aqaba. Wa madraka mal aqaba. And what will make you to know that what the steep steep path means? Fakko raqaba, freeing a slave from a slavery. Freeing a slave from a slave. Allah says that is a steep path. You will get into success, but you are not entering into that path. You are not entering to their path because the people of Arabia that was a matter of prestige as well to have as many slaves as they can yes but when Islam came ya subhanallah so sahaba their competition was going on setting them free setting them free Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala in one day he set free 17 slaves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, in his life, he set free almost 3,600 slaves. He used to buy them and to, to, to set them free. Sayyidina Usman ibn Affan, he uh, uh, set free 1,700 slaves. That wherever there was a slave. So the Sahaba, they used to go there and to pay the price. You are free. You are Free. And that was the case that later on, these slaves, these slaves, they are the authentic authority of our deen. Yes, we have this uh, big treasury of tafsir because of those slaves. We have this big treasury of Islamic laws because of those slaves. We have this big preserved treasury of hadith because of what? Because of those slaves. Rizwanullah alayhi majma'in. Sayyidina Nafi'a. The teacher of Abu Hanif and Malik, he was a slave. He was a slave. Sayyidina Ikrama, the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was a slave. Sayyidina Zahak and Qatada, they were slaves. Salim, he was the slave of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala an. Ata ibn Abi Rabah, he was a slave. At that time, the only free alim, who was a free, from Tabi'een, who was a free alim, mean in, not a slave, he was a Arab. He was, that was Imam Ibrahim al-Nikhai, the grand teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa, 
رحمت اللہ علیہ اتروائز ان ایوری بگ سٹی دی آتنٹی کتاٹی آف اسلام خلافہ واز ایلیبریٹڈ سلیو واز ایلیبریٹڈ سلیو یس عبد الملک ابن مروان دی خلیفہ ہو دی خلیفہ یس ہو واز کنٹرولنگ دی افریکہ دی ہول افریکہ از ویل عبد الملک ابن مروان ہی کیم ٹو فرفام حج with his ministers and with his sons yes and the announcers was announcing the announcer was announcing that regarding your problems religious problem the only one who has the right to give fatwa that is Imam Atai ibn Abi Rabah so nobody has the right to give fatwa but only Atai ibn Abi Rabah it's a great prestige in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the sons said, they did. Can we meet this sheikh? This grand mufti, Atai ibn Abi Rabah? Yes. He said, yes, inshallah we'll meet him. We will meet him. So Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he was coming to touch Hajar Aswad in Tawaf. And there was pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing. Yes. And everybody was eager to go and to touch Hajar Aswad and the black stone. And suddenly, a black man from Africa, having a big beard and a big turban on his head. Yes, he was coming, and when the people saw him, yes, so everybody said, Oh, Ja Sheikh, Ja Tanahau, give him way, Sheikh is here. And he went very easily, and he touched, and then he started. So the prince, he asked Abdul Malik, Who is that Sheikh? He said, This is Imam Ata ibn Abi Rabah. This is Sheikh Ata ibn Abi Rabah. And Abdul Malik said that don't look at my kingdom. This is the actual kingdom. He is the king. He is ruling the hearts of people. He is ruling the hearts of And I cannot rule their bodies even. He said that I cannot rule their bodies even. Yes, I rule their body because of my army. If the army is not there, I cannot rule their bodies even. And he is ruling their hearts. Yes, and then after that, Imam Atta ibn Abi Rabah, رضي الله تعالى عن, he was offering his two rakat. Allahu Akbar. Abdul Malik came, and he was sitting there beside him, along with his sons and the ministers. When the Imam met, Salam Salam alaykum wa rahmatullah, Salam alaykum wa rahmatullah, he was making dua. Allahumma jalna hudatam mahdiyin. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guide us and guide the entire humanity. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nastaghfiruka an sayyatina. We ask your maghfira and forgiveness from our shortcomings and from our mistakes. Yes, he made dua and then he was sitting there. Even the king was unable to say salam even to him. Yes, but then the prince said that, Dad, why you are not talking to him? He said that he is in muraqaba. So I cannot disturb him. That's against his respect. That's against the respect of the Sheikh. I cannot do that. When he did it, then Abdul Malik said, Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, assalam, ahlan, wa sahlan, wa marhaban bik. Yes, he was knowing him that this is the king. This is the Khalifa. But as a common layman, as he was receiving a common layman, he said, wa alaikum, assalam, wa rahmatullahi, wa barakatuh, ahlan, wa sahlan. Kif halak? He said, bi khair. Alhamdulillah. He said, the Sheikh, I want to join your dars for a few days. So Sheikh said, that my dars does not need any permission. Anybody can attend because that is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he asked him that Sheikh, any khidma which I can do, any help which I can do. So he said that, Kun, kun kal abil ar-ra'iyya. Yes, the good help which you can do, that be like a father to your ra'iyya. Be like a father to your people. Wa illa fatus'alu anhum yawm al-qiyama. Otherwise, on the day of judgment, I think you will be in a very big trouble. In a very big trouble. Yes. So then he said, that Shaykh, can I give you some hadiyya? Atai ibn Abi Rabah says, Laysatli bi haja, I don't need it. I don't. 
need it. And suddenly, a servant came and he brought food to Sheikh. And what was the food? There was barley bread. There was barley bread and one cup of milk. And three dates were there with Zamzam. And Sheikh was sitting there and he ate it. And then he said, Alhamdulillah, Allazi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana min al muslimin And after that, Sheikh started thus. The ulama from Arab and Hajam, they were sitting around him in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Atai ibn Abi Rabah, he started with he qala haddasana Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an. That our teacher Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an related this hadith. That kuntu ma'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was with the messenger of Allah. Ya subhan, what a life that is. That's a life. That is a life. Yes? Yes or not? So that's why the ulama, if you will ask them that I will give you a kasar. But the only thing is that you will not have students to teach. He will say just throw the kasar in Pacific. You know what I'm saying? Because that's against his nature. What he will do with kasar? What he will do with billions of dollars? You know what I'm saying? That's against his nature. So Ibn Umar, Awta Ibn Abi Rabah, when he finished his verse, so once again, Abdul Malik, he came to him and he said that, Sheikh, that I want to give you some money. You should spend it wherever you want. He said, for me, I don't need it. Yes, for other masarif, you know much more better than me. So you should go and spend it. So when they stood up, so the prince said, that what an istighna. Istighna means such a thing, that you are not giving any importance to someone who is important in this world. Yes, that's called istighna. So what an istighna? He said that this was Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says. And that's why that today the announcement was going on that only Imam Ata ibn Abir, he said that otherwise there will be other ulama, but this istighna has given him this. A fakkur a kabatin freeing up a slave from slavery. A wet abun are giving food for yomil in a day's emas kabatin of hunger and famine. Hunger and famine. F A M I N E. Famine. We call it kahat. We call it what? Kahat. When grain is not available. When food is not available. Even though you have money. You have money. You have. Dollars of bills, billions of dollars, but grain is not available in the whole country. So what you will do? You can eat dollars, yes, or gold and silver, and that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said regarding gold and silver, inna huma al hajaran, yes, inna huma al That's a medium of exchange. That that is what a medium of exchange itself. That's not something usable and good for human. Yes, and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. That if no food is available and nobody is selling you food for that gold and silver, in now Hajaran, so these are two types of rocks, nothing else. These are two mines. These are so people cannot eat mines. Yes, they can sell it to France and yes or not? Yes, the whole Badakhshan. Awet amun fi yawmin zimasqabatin. Are giving food in a day of hunger and famine, yatiman to an orphan, zamakrabatin, near of kin, a relative. An orphan who is near to you in relation. Aw miskin al to a poor, zamatrabatin, afflicted with misery. Afflicted with misery. Summa kana min al lazina and then. Kana min al-lazina, he was of those amanu who believed what the was of Bessabri and recommended one another to preservance and patience. Recommended one another to what? To preservance and patience. Summa kana min al-lazina, amanu what the was of Bessabri. So now look at me, you, our mates, our you are our classmates. We are classmates. We are class fellows, all of us. So, everyone is bound, yes, to recommend to each other patience, preservance, stability, steadfastness. It will make your personality. It will make your personality. Yes? Yes. Summa kana minal lazina. 
Summakana minal lazena and then he was from those amano who believed with the wasso. Bis sabre and they recommended or enjoined each other. Bis sabre with patience and stability. With the wasso bil marhama and enjoined each other bil marhama. To pity and compassion or to mercy and compassion. To mercy and compassion. Ulaika, such like people are ashabul maimana, the people of right hand, they will have their personal record in their right hand. Wallazina and those kafarube ayatina who disbelieved in our rules, in our ayat and verses, whom ashabul mash'ama, they are the people of left hand. Agalayhim narum mosada, the fire will be shut over them from all around. The fire will be shut over them for all six dimensions. From all six dimensions or directions. Yes, from up, down, front, back, right and left. So they would be covered by fire from all around. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and forbid. So the brief summary of Suratul Balad. The life in this world will have hardship and difficulties. People may not be proud of their investments. They are watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why they are not doing good to the creature of Allah? If they will do, they will have their record in right hand. While the disbelievers, they will be covered by fire from all around. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ربنا الحمد لله بالقوانين زينا زكينا من القوانين ما نسينا وعلمنا من واجهلنا وصلاتنا وتوانا للوانا النهار فالله خير الحافظ وارحم الراحمين